It's a special edition of the Football Family and Food Podcast as we mix in Coordinator's Corner and we also have Head Coach Nick Davis with us. It is an all-star special. This was kind of like, you know, the Battle of the Network Stars, but it's not. It It's all the coaches rolled into one podcast here as we get ready for the regular season. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Johnson, and joining us is head coach Nick Davis, defensive coordinator Dante Barty, and offensive coordinator Tyler Hennis. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Football Family and Food Podcast, Coordinator Corner Edition. Thanks for Thank having you. us, Bob. You know that my contract states that I have to do 12 episodes a year, so... And we usually get to at least eight. So that's uh, that, that's about as good as we get sometimes around here. So uh, pretty busy, though, for you all. It's camp, to, a camp opened up and you guys hit the ground running. So uh, I want to start out real quick. Uh, I'll start with you, Coach Davis, then Coach Barty, and then Co- Coach Hennis. What, I, I, let's discuss something that has been very surprising to you since camp has started. Yeah, so uh, our football camp started, and it really wasn't much of a, a fall football camp. Uh, we had two practices in our maybe center because the wet ball globe temperature was over 105 degrees. So we had two indoor practices and we start off our fall football camp. And our first official practice as a staff was the first day of school, Bob. So uh, we've been kind of in normal school mode practicing uh monday going tuesday wednesday thursday and uh friday we've had some scrimmages and we've scrimmaged on saturday so we've kind of been in a normal routine so i think the biggest surprise to me is the fact that we did not have a fall football game coach Barty. yeah um you know i think from my perspective the way that the players not only believe in the staff as a whole Coach Davis has done a great job since the spring and even prior promoting a positive culture with positive energy and that type of otter on mentality we talk about, um, as well as they're you know wanting to learn even under circumstances that aren't always the best, right? Regardless of those circumstances, classes, uh, you know, just regular functions and just the every you know everyday activities that come with a not normal fall camp. Right. But also just the the energy that the the program has around the staff, around both the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball and the willingness to take coaching, the willingness to work hard um, and the willingness to do so in a way that promotes the form of mentality that Coach Davis promoted, which is that kind of braised bond mentality that makes us a family. I think that's been really surprising for me, particularly as a young coach, you know, coming into to Ottawa University this fall camp. Coach Ennis, how about you? Uh, you know, they kind of mentioned, well, Coach Davis mentioned the whole change in not having a true fall camp, which was definitely a surprise. Uh, but offensively, I guess the biggest surprise has been just the, the uh, transition um, within install has been really nice for us. We didn't have to start back at day one. Uh, we use some technology to help us install in the summer. Um, and then we just, we picked up right where we left off from spring ball, which allowed us to dive right into some of our more advanced stuff in the playbook, as well as getting an early start on our game one opponent Southwestern. So hopefully that shows up on game one, but uh, you know, that's something I've never done in coaching for a long time now is, is not going back and revisiting day one, day two, day three install. We just picked up right where we left off. And a lot of our older guys and turners that were here in spring and the summer really, um, you know, enjoyed that to where they didn't have to relearn everything another time. They just picked up and we kind of kept moving towards, uh, you know, game one. So that was a surprise and a good surprise at that. As camp has gone on, Coach Davis, do you feel uh, that the team is starting to get and more comfortable with what's being asked and also with their teammates? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say I would add another surprise is, and not that you want this, but we have not gotten in a team fight, offense versus defense. Uh, 
you, you know, we'll find out if that's a good or bad thing here in a few weeks. Uh, when we went to play a mid American Nazarene, there was a bunch of scuffles and, uh, we have not got into a fight with ourselves. So, uh, I do think that we've came together as the team pretty well and, and the guys generally enjoy being around. So I think we, we spent a lot of time with team bonding, spent a lot of time setting our culture with the positivity and bringing a lot of people other than me to talk to the team has been huge. We've had, you know, f- probably 10 guest speakers come talk to the team about whether they were an alum or they're someone important at the school that pres- provides a service for our guys. So uh, we've been pretty blessed with not only the team hearing the message from me, they're hearing it from multiple people that are invested in our program and multiple alums. Including Casey Weeder, who, uh, joined you for for a conversation uh, was there a lot of kicking discussed yeah there was records about kicking discussed and current kickers on our team that are one team to break said records let's get uh, let's get down a little bit more nuts and bolts here with coach Barty and also with coach Hennis because this is our first time to get to interview and and talk with you both uh, we'll start with you, Coach Hennis, and then with Coach Barty. Uh, we heard from Coach Davis in several podcast episodes what drew him to you guys. So I want you to tell me what drew yourself to Ottawa University. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from Kansas originally. So um, having the opportunity to move back closer to family. And, you know, do the profession I love to do was a great opportunity. Um, you know, the, ex- the, the interview process um, and, you know, the conversations that I had with Coach Davis was intriguing. He was, you know, a young and upcoming coach that I thought could bring some different, you know, knowledge to my coaching experience that I hadn't been around. And then, um, you know, I knew some of the guys on the staff already that I thought were be a good fit um as far as work work environment um you know he coach davis and some of the staff preach family and that's what i'm about um you know i definitely love my job i love being able to compete and win football games but at the end of the day i thought we had the same vision which was to impact young men and also still have a family and be be in a family atmosphere as a staff so those things drew me to this job and then, uh, you know, it's all came true and it's been a, a great experience. Uh, you know, the six, seven months that I've been here. Coach Barty, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, what, uh, drew your attention to Ottawa university. Yeah. Um, you know, in the beginning, coach Davis and I had some, uh, mutual connections. Uh, coach Davis, uh, put a lot of, um, faith in me in terms of the ability for me as a young coordinator to run, um, a system and the flexibility to do so, uh, kind of the way in which um, I wanted to with his input throughout the process, right? I lean on Coach Davis all the time on in terms of not only schematically, but culturally and strategically, right? To like task of how do we, how do we coach these particular types of players? And so Coach Davis had done a really good job in the, uh, in the beginning, continues to be kind of that a stalwart worth confident for myself that I knew that as a young guy coming in to try to be a coordinator, I needed that type of mentorship. Um, two, you know, for me, I can't, I've, I've kind of gone from coast to coast. So I've gone from Iowa to California, Berkeley to Mississippi and now uh, to Kansas. You know, I felt that not only the environment of the university was a good fit, but the environment that Coach Davis had brought to the table was one that I wanted to be a part of. Um, There are a lot of people who win a lot of football games and don't particularly enjoy their lives. There are a lot of people who live win a lot of football games and do their enjoy their lives. And I thought Coach Davis was part of that latter group where you could both have a work life balance that I think is necessary in order to be successful in the long term, right? Because just like Coach Hennis says, a lot of people like to think that football is everything, and it's not. Right. And Coach Davis and Coach Hannes do a great job of putting that perspective so that as a young coach, I have the ability to be flexible in how I manage the people while also being in a family environment where you aren't doing things or working in an environment that is negative. Coach has done a great job of that. You know, from a 
a perspective of geography. You know, Kansas is a kind of a quite literally a central location from where I have been. I'm from Arizona, went to northern Iowa, and from northern Iowa went to California, California went to Mississippi. So I've kind of had all different perspectives of climate. And this is a, probably the best uh, so far. Um, and just the environment in general is uh, something I wanted to be a part of. So that's probably the predominant reasons why Coach Davis has been such a great fit uh, for myself. So Coach Davis likes to refer to himself as the chief energy officer for Ottawa University. Uh, I would like to know, do either you, uh, Coach Barty, or Coach Hennis, try to challenge him on a daily basis? Is it like a semi-anarchal commune where the title is bounced around different days? Is it is it the free bird rule of professional wrestling where it doesn't matter? It, it's any one of you can come away with that title. Uh, walk me through with talk and talk to me about how this works. Do you guys strive to be there? Are you already there? Do you share? Oh, I would say from my perspective, I think we bring different forms of energy to to the table. Coach Davis has done a great job of providing that positive form of energy that's consistent, that's always there for the players, right? Um, And it's still, uh, as we would like to say, demanding, but not demeaning. You know, I think, uh, Coach, I, I am, as a young coach, highly energetic, right? Um, highly assertive uh, and that that works with coach Davis as well and so I think we create a good um, a good mixture whereby we're able to balance each other out on a consistent basis and coach Hennis's energy in my opinion is like that very stalwart professional that just has a good time and at the same time, was able to be professional the whole time. That's how I think of it. Um, I think we kind of work together to create chief energy officer mentality as a culture more than having a singular chief energy officer. So I guess to answer your question, it would be more like a commune and a philosophy than it would be a singular structure, like, say, like a capitalist laissez-faire methodology of a product. That would be mine. Coach Hennis? Uh, you know, I'm the old guy on the staff, so I don't, I don't have uh, as much energy as these younger guys do. But, um, you know, I've been coaching for 14 years, and I don't think I've ever thought I was going to say I was the oldest guy on staff. But it's actually hit its time. But I think, uh, you know, Coach Davis is never – he's a competitive guy. He don't, I don't think he'll ever let somebody overtake the uh, positive energy from him. But I do think I bring a pro, a positive outlook on things throughout the day uh, as much as possible to our coaches, our GAs, our players, um, as much as possible, always trying to look at the, the glass as half full. Um, and I do. I catch myself sometimes thinking of it as half empty. But the um, biggest thing I do is recognize it and change my attitude. But, uh, yeah, definitely not the chief energy officer. Um, not saying that we all don't bring that same positive energy or outlook because that is our, our culture and our, our, uh, you know, motto and and how we want our kids to be. Uh, I think I can kind of bring it in a different angle with the positive outlook, um, in whatever good or bad situation comes your way. But I would imagine it helps. You, you, you bring up that, that you are the oldest member of the coaching staff, uh, you're with and coaching experience and that it, it helps to have somebody though, that has, a little more tread off the tires to be able to, you know, bring, bring a, a different perspective or to talk people down sometimes. I mean, it, it being a coach that that's a lot of pressure. That's a, a lot of stress, anxiety in that. And sometimes you got to have a different energy source to kind of help talk you back into reality at times. Would you not agree? Agree. Uh, you know, hundred percent. I think, uh, you know, attacking it in several different angles. Uh, you know, not everybody responds to the same type of uh, motivation. So the energy is great, but it might not reach all of our kids. And so, uh, you know, maybe a, just a realistic outlook of positivity talk might be better. Um, so it just, you know, every kid's a little bit different. So having, uh, you know, different guys, different ways of motivating our players and, and inspiration is always going to be a good, uh, 
good opportunity. Coach Davis, uh, so far from what you have seen from your your two coordinators, uh, I, I obviously we're not going to do a job assessment here right now, and not in front of them. We'll do that behind closed doors later on. Uh, but uh, would you say that they brought a different or fresh perspective to some things uh, to this team? Yeah, I think for sure, and like we've given them pretty much full reign on both sides of the ball, and I want them to handle being the coordinator of the offense and coordinator of the defense while I'm trying to keep the pulse on the culture and on both sides of the football. And maybe that's why we haven't had a, a team fight yet, um, because I coordinated our defense last year. Now I'm a you know news alert, Bob, an offensive football coach now, uh, coaching the the running backs. So. Uh, I've kind of been able to coach every single one of our football players besides the incoming freshmen on defense. And uh, I think I have a pretty good, um, I guess, take on how they, they operate and what are the best ways to get the most out of some of those guys. So with that said, let's uh, let me go back to the two coordinators here. Uh, of course, uh, Coach Barty has not been here as long as Coach Hennis. But this question is for you both, uh, understanding also, though, that the time frames are a little bit different as far as wh- how long you've been here and such. Uh, do you feel like that you have been successful in, t- in transitioning into what you're wanting to get across to the players, uh, even when it comes to a playbook or a style? Or is that something that is continuing to be worked on? I'll start, I guess. Um, you know. I would say from my perspective, I've been really, really happy with the player's ability to kind of gain the type of process that I have been looking for, the mentality that I bring to the table on our side of the football, and just kind of the the method of not only coaching, uh, teaching, uh, and correction, but just personality, right? Um, I think that my players have, uh, our players, I should say, have embraced it. I think they believe in it. And I think, you know, one of the things you hear uh, players on the defense side of the ball say a good amount is that the work works. So they recognize that, you know, when we do it, the way in which we're taught to do it with the type of process and mentality that I have asked for, um, it works. And when we don't, it doesn't, you know, and I think that has kind of really shown and been surprising in a positive way, um, a very su- good surprise in a positive way. Um, and I'm very happy with the progress that we have made, especially in a short period of time uh, with some some methodological change, just in terms of process and teaching and et cetera, et cetera, because you have a new coach, right? I think uh, we've done a good job with that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we challenge our kids on a day-to-day basis all the way back from when we first put in the offense and in uh you know march of last well this year march and uh right before spring ball we you know we didn't really hold back any punches we didn't slow down and we haven't and um you know has there been obstacles and challenges absolutely and are we where we want to be no because i don't think we ever will be um i think we'll continue to add wrinkles and if at any point in time we get complacent that's when we're going to get surpassed so um you know we i've been very pleased with our kids willingness to learn and uh, to come in and ask questions and and continue to try to master their craft, um, those things have all been very pleasing. Um, but we'll continue to give them as much as they handle, which in return is going to hopefully make us a better offense. So, but um, like I said, we picked up right where we left off the spring ball, and uh, we're not going to stop. And I think it's allowing us to get ahead of the game a little bit uh, for this upcoming season. So, but I've been very pleased with with our kids and uh, you know student athletes been able to uh, take on both those roles and, uh, you know, continue to push forward. So very pleased. So let's talk a little bit about the scrimmage at Mid-American Nazarene. It was an opportunity to see somebody other than yourself out on the practice field. One of the things I noticed and we'll start uh, defensively uh, was there seemed to be a good amount of speed being able to go coast to coast and stringing out plays uh, that they were facing. Uh, would you agree with that, Coach Barty? 
I would. I would say that we we have the ability to put a lot of speed on the football field. Um, we have the ability to run sideline to sideline. And, you know, I a long time ago, I heard the adage that defense at the end of the day is running and hitting. And at the end of the day, it really is, right? With For all the scheme, for all the methods of teaching, at the end of the day, can you get the ball on the ground, right? And I think we are able to run to the football. I think we have the mentality and the tenacity to run to the football because a lot of times that team speed comes through just effort, right? You get guys who are high motor guys and they may not be the fastest, right? But they're always giving that effort. I think we have really good effort and really good mentality on our defense. And that's allowed us to kind of go sideline to sideline with the methodology that we use. Overall, did you feel like there were more positives than negatives in that scrimmage. And do you feel comfortable with where you're heading into with the week one matchup against Southwestern? Yeah, I think, you know, the first time, you know, both for myself personally, right. And uh, seeing the players play against an opponent other than ourselves, right. Is always something where you're always nervous about not only their, their psyche, their mentality going into the beginning of it, but also just the the volume of things, right? They have to deal with uh, mentally, emotionally, and tactically. Like, what are the different things that they're doing, right? Which is not what they're seeing maybe every day in a scripted form of practice. I think Coach Davis has done a great job because we've had scrimmages against ourselves and p- periods where we're calling the game like it's a game of playing the game as much as possible. So I was really happy with that from our players. They understood the mechanics of how we got in and out of things, which I think is a challenge that gets un, uh, unnoticed, right? For example, if you're trying to go from a bigger personnel grouping to a smaller personnel grouping, what's the method to get kids from the sideline onto the field, kids off the field? Like that takes work and time, especially on the defense side of the ball where you don't hold the shot clock last. The offense does, right? The offense dictates those tempos. The offense dictates that timing. And so I thought our kids did a really good job being locked into that process, the process of getting on the bench, listening, yada, yada, yada. You know, I thought that was all really, really good for us. I thought from a, from a scheme perspective, you know, I think that we're going to be really, really good. I think that, you know, our players, the first time going against another opponent, were able to kind of see how it fit together, right? How were we able to take the tools that we have and fit them together to play another team? And I thought they did a good job with that. There's certainly plenty to improve on. There was plenty to improve on. There always is, right? That's part of the process that we play with um, and the mentality that we have as a program. And so I think we are on the rise in that regard. And I am 100% confident in where we are heading going into week one. I think we have a good chance to be very, very special going into week one on defense. If you take a look back, especially the last couple of years and and at times last year, um, there was some struggle defensively with getting off, being able to get off the field at the right times. Uh, or doing something that elongated drives when it you it really they had every opportunity to not. Do you feel confident that <clears throat> with this group that you guys are in a good spot and that that is something that is able to be corrected uh, as we head into the regular season? Yeah, I think you know part of it is building the philosophy as that defense of getting off the field when it's necessary, like. Guys, you know, this is the situations that we're in. This is how we get off the field, right? So that they're confident in what they're going to see in those situations to get off the field, right? Because third down is one of the most, if not the most important down. You know, from a perspective of unforced errors, right? Things that, um, you know, personal foul penalties, rough passer penalty, any of those type of things, right? I think that comes from the culture Coach Davis has been able to build I think I've just been able to continue that positive energy and that focus and demand of guys. We just don't play that way, right? We just don't do it that way here. And so the players understand and are able to come to grips with the idea of like, that's just not allowed. So for them, it's just not allowed. Um, I think they've done a really good job of embracing that. You know, at times there are speed bumps. 
Uh, but that is with any program, especially when you're entering as a new coordinator into a first year program with a new staff. And that's the kind of the situation we're in. But Coach Davis done a great job kind of promoting that uh, mentality. And I've just been able to continue it, in my opinion. So I have confidence that we will have the tools and the execution to get off the field on um, those crucial situations in the game, um, because I think that's kind of we just demand nothing else. We'll focus over on the offensive side here for a couple of minutes. Coach Hennis, uh, run game seemed to do okay against Mid-America. Uh, looked like maybe some uh, the offensive line is in a good spot. Uh, uh, would you agree with those uh, assessments? Um, yeah, I thought, um, you know, we do. Yeah, I think our offensive line is in a solid position right now, and uh, we've been able to consistently run the football, which has been great. That's obviously something we're going to be able to do to win football games, whether it be week one to the end of the season, into the postseason, whatever it is, we need to be able to establish and maintain that run game. So, um, you know, that starts up front, and we've got some good running backs to be able to do that as well. So, uh, no, it was good. And I think the elephant in the room, though, is it's going to come down to quarterback play. Uh, with with this team and last year several different quarterbacks throughout the season there were several some rough performances by um, by the quarterbacks just not able to really find any any sort of uh, rhythm do you feel like that things are in a different spot as we head into this season, do you feel confident that you you've got your one A or one B if you're looking at two quarterbacks? You know, wasn't here last season, so you know, be able to compare if it's better or worse would be difficult. Um, you know, not sure if it was the the actual quarterback or the teaching or the offense that was the disconnect. But um, this season, I've been very pleased with with um, all of our quarterbacks, really, from the, the freshman to Dakota, who's, who's um, you know, uh, one of the quarterbacks from last year. And then uh, the, the, the newcomers that we had this spring, uh, you know, I think from the quarterback play to the O-line, to the running backs, to the tight ends, to the receivers, um, the biggest thing is going to be consistency. Um, and that's uh, from going to class to going to the weight room to blocking the A gap and inside zone or making the right read on, on uh, you know, four verts, whatever it is. Like, um, you know, and I think right now, specifically at the quarterback position, um, the play, the consistency has been there. I've been very pleased with the consistency that those guys are playing at and understanding what we're trying to get accomplished within our offense. Um, you know. I don't think at the, at the scrimmage we showed that um, throughout, but, um, you know, throughout fall camp and stuff like that, I think there's been a lot of consistent play, which makes me feel very optimistic. But, um, you know, we got to be able to do that every day. And, uh, you know, I don't think we showed that against Mid-American um, up front in the backfield at the quarterback position. So hopefully the, the lights don't, deter us from being a consistent football player, but um, we definitely got to get better. Do you, I'm not going to ask you to name names. We I've been through this long enough to know that nobody's going to give any names right now because nobody wants to give media fatties an advantage or anything, but that's okay. I get that. Um, but without naming names, do you have your, in your mind, who's going to start on a start week one? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, I think you got to give, you got to give those kids a plan, and they need to know that now. They can't find that out the week of or the day of. But um, you know, the we also know that I think all three of those quarterbacks give us a great opportunity to win football games. So um, you know, there's going to be a, a constant battle, and uh, you know. Some people could see that as a negative. Some people see it as a positive. And, um, you know, I was pitying myself and having to make a tough decision. But at the end of the day, 
Uh, I feel very blessed the fact that I feel like I have three solid quarterbacks that can win this conference. Um, so uh, we're in a good position, I think, at the quarterback position with uh, with uh, those three guys that have been there consistently day in and day out, putting in the work, and they've shown that they can do what I asked them of and, and play within the realm of their game and, and within our offense. So, But, you know, we will. We'll have a guy named to go into that game, and um, but there will be a, a plan to – to make sure that we have a ability to play all three within our offense. And that's uh, kind of what our offense is built around, which is great. So we're looking at a multiple quarterback system then through throughout the season. Uh, it's just going to, it will depend upon uh, situations. Basically it'll be a situational type deal. I think I'm open-minded to play multiple quarterbacks, but if the guy that we got named day one doesn't miss a beat, and he goes on a hot run, and he might not ever come out of a game. And nobody would ever know except for the the, the people that listen to this show. Ah, fantastic. I, pimping it. I like it. Hit, hit the <laughs> show hard. Hit it hard. Uh, Coach Davis, We, I, I don't want to leave you out because I, I certainly don't want you to have the boo-boo face or anything that we haven't talked to you a whole lot. I mean, it is partially your show, too, besides Coordinator's Corner. Uh, we talked the last time uh, that you're going to have some time now between the scrimmage and week one to maybe work on fine tuning some areas to uh, uh, that need some work on. And at least you've got an opportunity to, to see what that is uh, and have that time to do it. Uh, were you guys able to pinpoint some things and has that been your focus? Uh, pretty much uh, with your slate of practices since the uh, the scrimmage. Yeah, you know, we, we've tried to hit pretty much every scenario, and, you know, whether we were great on defense or poor on defense and offense on third down. Uh, we, we ran those scenarios today in practice. We went and had a red zone period where our, our one defense did an amazing job on the first possession. And, uh, on the second possession, our offense scored, you know, ironing, shopping, iron. Uh, all of our young guys have got a ton of reps. So uh, we'll be playing Benedictine to start the season off on uh, August 29th with our, our gold squad. Um, they're going to go up there to Atchison, Kansas. So we're, we're taking the whole staff. We're going to take a bus of uh, 55 guys, and, and we're going up there trying to win a football game against those cats, which is going to be a good test for – our gold squad and, and leave there with some uh, Gambino's pizza, which we talked about in our, in our last show. And um, after our scrimmage, Bob, we, we had Minsky's pizza for our guys. So our guys have been treated pretty well um, in these first two weeks in terms of on the road pizza. All right. From the best food coach in the country. Wow. The go some gold standard stuff right there. I, and, and since we haven't really talked a lot about food, uh, Coach Hennis and Coach Barty, uh, have you taken any advice from Coach Davis on any specific eateries? And have you found something uh, that is your go-to since uh, coming on board on the staff? And we'll start with you, uh, Coach Barty. Oh, wow. Um, huh. You know, um, the... The uh, steaks, I'm a, a steak guy. I'm a steak, burgers, type of guy. Um, really like a good steak. Um, you know, I live out a, a little ways away in Lee Summit, and they just put in a Cooper's Hawk that's been very, very nice. Um, so that's been really good with some really nice steak. Um, you know, I found out when I first got here about um, – the Mexican food, right? Um, and the tacos in particular for Kansas. And so uh, Coach Davis, I forgot what it was called, took me to a, a Mexican food restaurant when I first got out here. That was very, very, very nice. Um, and I very much enjoyed, um, you know, I've, I've, I've really been able to, to eat some uh, really good meat here um, you know, and tasted some, some good barbecue. There's a place out here called Pearl Tavern that I've had the opportunity to have. It's like a seafood slash steak place. that has been really nice as well. So yeah, I've had, I've had some good food. Coach Ennis. 
Oh, well, there's only one answer to that question. That's pizza time down in Ottawa. Uh, <laughs> so I think that's the, the go-to spot. Never never a bad time at pizza time. So um, if you're down there, the buffet is uh, out of control. It's great. Look Coach Barty has also spent a lot of money at Primetime Grill. Yes. Yes, I do like Primetime Grill. It's an official sponsor of the, the show. Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah, for the coaches show. That's right. Are we? So, are we going to see you, everyone at the coaches show come? Uh, oh, God, that that first Thursday before the game. So that would be what uh, September first, I believe it is. Well, I love Prime Time Grill, so <laughs> you'll see me there, <laughs> Coach Hennis. Uh, Will there be extracurriculars at at the old primetime grill that night, or uh, will you uh, head back and uh, and 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 take some time to reflect on your day of of coaching as you get ready for that that week one game? Um, yeah, if, if I'm invited, I'll be there. It's always an open invitation to the uh, <laughs> to to the coordinators. Absolutely, okay. there's. Just making sure. I know it's tight fit sometimes with the, the amount of people that'll be there. So just making sure I got a spot to sit. Oh, no, no. We will. There will always be a spot to sit. Don't worry about that. Coach Davis has connections. That's good to hear. Got some real connections there. Uh, so I think that's going to, uh, that'll wrap it up for us here for this, uh, this edition. Um, guys, thank you so much for taking time out to talk. I know it's, it's an absolute busy part of your uh, of your season getting ready and uh we look forward to uh to seeing what's going to take place come uh that first week and and hopefully uh see a, a nice uh big Braves victory against the mound builders yeah Thanks appreciate for having it. us bob thank yeah. you very much so that's going to wrap it up for us for this edition of the football family and food podcast coordinators corner edition and uh, again, uh, Casey Weeder will have the uh, show on September 1st at uh, Primetime Grill. That one you'll hear on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and on KOFO.com. And then, of course, game day on Saturday, 5 o'clock pregame, 6 o'clock kick, as uh, Casey Weeder will have the call uh, from uh, Advent Health Field as the Braves will take on southwestern in a mighty matchup in week one but again we appreciate you listening to us on this edition of the football family and food podcast 